Plane is the best investment choice of our le of our lifetime. What is it, and what's the point of it? Is it is it all really just about making money? The point of Bitcoin is that it solves the double spend problem that is caused by fractional reserve banking. So, when most of us, when we spend money, we take a hundred dollars, we go to the shop. We give them a hundred dollars, they give us a hundred dollars worth of food, the money is spent and it's gone. That makes total sense. But that's not what happens with most money. Most of the time, we put our money into a bank account. The banks take the money out, they loan it to someone else, they make a profit, and they put the money back in before before we want to take our money out. So, if you think, the proportions of it is roughly 1 to 10. So if you're in the United States of America, a bank with less than $15 million has no reserves. So it can just give out as many loans as it wants. A bank with more than $110 million has roughly a 10 to 11% uh, reserve. And then there's places like uh, UK, Sweden, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Hong Kong, where there's no reserves. So roughly speaking, when you get a hundred dollars and you put it into a bank, it gives gives puts out the loan nine times, and instead of a hundred dollars, there's now more than a thousand dollars in the system, and the Keynesians and the pro spending people will tell this is a good thing because now we've just created more wealth. No, the amount of wealth and land and food and shelter will remain roughly the same, but the amount of money being created into the system is expanding. Uh, roughly about four uh, percent a year. So, in twi so when you're saving, when you're putting money into your saving accounts for your pensions for the future, by the time you go to spend in twenty years' time, everything is twice as expensive, and you'll actually need to save twice the amount of money as you think because things are getting more expensive. Why do they get more expensive? Because of fractional reserve banking and. Central banks and governments are just continuously creating more money, spending more money, programs, bailouts, wars, and all this kind of nonsense. And, and it does happen that people go to their bank and they can't take money out because the bank has no money. Ireland, America, Greece, Cyprus, this has all happened several times and it happened... 10 years ago, do you guys remember the financial crisis? Do you remember everyone was freaking out about the financial crisis? And we wanted hope and change? The problem was never solved. The problem that the banks give out way too many loans to people who can't pay it back. And by the time the workers and the savers go get the money from a bank account to spend it on money and rent, the money can be gone. That problem has not been solved by the big banks or the central government, by the central banks or the governments. Bitcoin solves this problem with blockchain technology. When you send one Bitcoin, the Bitcoin is gone. And when you, so when you send a Bitcoin, and now you kind of have to wait an hour for a transaction to be confirmed, but it's worth the wait. So when you see that you need, we're waiting for like six confirmations, it confirms it checks the blockchain that your account hasn't sent a Bitcoin. And that way, you can't send the Bitcoin twice. And you can't store Bitcoin somewhere and loan it out to people like a fractional reserve. There are people that do run banks like a Bitcoin, with Bitcoin, and they do give loans, and they do have some like fractional reserve. But it doesn't multiply the amount of Bitcoin in the system. The amount of Bitcoin in the system remains the same. I'm not going to get into how exchanges do Bitcoin loans, but it's a bit different the way banks do loans. So the amount of Bitcoin, instead of being multiplied every every year, the amount of Bitcoin is going to decrease. I mean, at the moment, the amount of Bitcoin says it. The, the rate that Bitcoin is being created is slowly decreasing. And there will be no more Bitcoin created into uh, uh, was it in the in the two in two thousand one hundred whatever that century is called the twenty second century. In a hundred years time, there'll be no more Bitcoin created, and all the Bitcoin in the system will just be that. And that's why we call it a defla deflationary currency. So, 
So those of us who support a deflationary currency and we're against refractional reserve banking, we we believe that reckless sending out reckless loans to all these people who can't afford to buy their houses, what happens, well, it's not paranoia, it's not a conspiracy, it's what happens. Loans are given out to people who can't afford it, and the banks take their houses. So the banks will go, oh, we made a loss. No, the banks made a gain. They made a gain on, they made a gain on property. So every 10 years, the banks get a huge increase in property, and then they get to sell it again. They get to sell the property twice. I make more than twice the amount of money on it than they would as if they had just given a loan to someone who could pay it back really quickly. And we believe with less fractional reserve banking and less government spending and less power, there'll be less wars and there'll be less economic stability and there wouldn't be these crazy corporations that clearly own governments writing laws. So there you go. Bitcoin solves double spend problem caused by fractional reserve banking. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe. Go to cheapestbitcoinprice.com where you can buy $100 worth of Bitcoin and you get $110. Uh, uh, you, you get $110 worth of Bitcoin to get an extra $10 of Bitcoin free. Uh, I have links to videos about how, how to learn to trade, how to read charts, uh, books and charting and uh, exchanges and things like that that I like to, that I like to use. Live free or die trying.